Forget what you learned in school. Never mind what your parents told you, and disregard what your friends say. From now on, the only From people now on, you need to listen to, to are these guys. Are these guys? For the next several minutes, they'll take you on a journey through the political jungle. And when your journey is over and you're safe at home, they promise you'll be stronger, smarter, and just plain better. So buckle up, hang on to your ears, because your journey starts now. 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 Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. A little bit of foreshadowing there. Reagan's going to be on the show? <laughs> Reagan's going to be on the show. All right. Uh, no, I don't think Reagan's. But we're going to have somebody that is uh, uh, Kevin Bacon, six uh, steps, slices away from whatever it is. Remember, you know, seven slices of Kevin Bacon, the... You know, yeah, there was something about if you take Kevin Bacon and you chop him, him in seven pieces yeah. and throw him off a building in New York, yes, there's a 90% probability that you'll hit two people that are related to, to each other. To my cousin Bill. And your cousin Bill, who is always under big buildings in New York. It's yes. bizarre. I don't know why it is. It's bizarre. He's a doorman there. What do you expect? He's going to be there. Oh, that might explain it. And you know, the, do you know the that jacket. Kevin? Do you know that Kevin Bacon's father was a famous architecture and actually had written uh, textbooks for architecture that are still used today in universities. Here, here's the thing. Nobody cares when you say Bacon. <laughs> yeah, all, all you think history of, goes out the window. All you for think me. about is bacon, bacon, I, bacon, yeah, bacon, I bacon, bacon, bacon. I love bacon. bacon. <laughs> I love bacon. Oh well, let's get on with the show. Uh, we want to welcome everyone to another episode. It was, well. it, was it was going great. I, I, I can kill it. You know that. Another episode of At Odds, where we'll take you on an enjoyable journey through the political jungle with your guides, Nate and Brian. I'm Brian. Just You just pay attention to me. You don't have to pay attention to Nate. No, he's Brian. That's really all that matters. That's and I'm right. I'm sure the listeners have found that out already. Yeah, I, I'm the... All the comments I get that, man, that Brian guy. <laughs> all, all the emails. You should make sure to lose, keep him on the show. Lose Brian and you'll go far. Uh, you know, we are broadcasting from the back room of the Stitch and Time pub and studio in a small northern village in what country, Nate? Russia. Russia, which is Russia more today. foreshadowing. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it is foreshadowing. Yeah, da, with the da, Reagan da, thing, da, da, I mean. Da, da, vodka. With I, the Reagan thing, I, I Russia to, comes right I, after, I, right? I want to marry strong Russian woman for to pull plow and drink vodka. Uh, I, I like I like all bacon. Saying. That's Ke all I can think about. Kevin, now. do you have any bacon? I do have. I have bacon bits. I wonder if they serve <laughs> bacon here at the station. Bacon, 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 bacon. It's bacon, weird bacon, how bacon. they spell time in yeah. Russia. Yeah, it's T H. -Y yeah, Y M E. It's yeah, weird, sure. and I've eaten it. I don't like it. You don't like time? Not so much. Not even a stitch in time. No. Wow. Well, let's. <laughs> <laughs> we're just having too much fun today. All right. Uh, today we're going to have... I'm excited about our guest. I'm I know. Gonna She's going to be fantastic. She's a distinguished author and a former Reagan senior staff member, Karna Bodman. We'll be discussing her new political thriller, and I have to throw that in there, romantic for the ladies, political th thriller, Castle Bravo. So don't go away. We want to remind you that we are a live, except when we're not, call-in show at 248-455-ODDS. That's 248-455-6337. Yep, we are live every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. So between 7.30 and 8.30 p.m. on Tuesdays, give us a call. Whatever you want to talk about, we probably won't hang up on you. Probably not, although maybe. It's happened we can't, before. We can't guarantee it. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. Go there and like it for updates on what we're uh, doing and what our next guests are going to be. And you can also go where, Nate? At our website? www.atoddshow.com. Facebook, the easiest way to get there if you don't want to search for it is facebook.com slash atoddshow. Wow, really? At That's odd it, show? at oddshow. It's pretty easy to remember. Uh huh. Well, it's not easy to remember because we're fairly forgettable. We are. But if you remembered our show, you could remember how to get to our Facebook page. Wait a minute. What am I doing here? Click I like. 
I went to, I went to the I went to the doctor today and uh, I you know I had a rash. <laughs> I don't like to talk about it. And uh, I, the nurse was there talking about you know doing the blood pressure and all that. And she goes, now when did the rash start? And I said, oh, about two weeks ago. And she goes, oh yeah. I said, yeah, about the day after I was abducted by aliens. And she paused and she looked at me. And she goes, I think we're going to have to examine different parts of you today. Oh boy, it was great. That's why you've been in such a good mood. <laughs> I, had I, a com- wondered. I, I had wondered. A, I had a complete scan. Yeah, <laughs> that's weird. I want to remind people that you and I did, beyond all reasonable uh, odds, wrote a book. It's a kid's book, so it doesn't really count. But it's oh, a, it's, I, look now you're going to offend all the the children books writers. I, I think I just that did. I'm trying to get on the show, I, oh. and they're not going to come on the show because you said something like that. Or will they? Because well, just to yell they, at you because we're we're different and cool and no, neat. No, they no, won't. Yeah, they probably. Won't. Well, we wrote a book. It's a kids' book. Uh, it's pro gun. It's called My Parents Open Carry. You can go to uh, what's the website? My MyParentsOpenCarry.com. Huh. And it's if they order it one. now, they'll get a bonus book by White Feather Press. Yeah, for free. That's absolutely cra- crazy two, deal. Two crazy books deal. at once. You can't beat it. Uh, the rally went great in Michigan. We had uh, Doug Giles and uh, Jan Morgan. It was a complete success. We had hundreds and hundreds well, well, of pro gun. What? You say you're, complete success. I think you're forgetting. Oh yeah. You're forgetting the huge numbers of anti-gun protesters that were there. I forgot about that. Yeah, there were presents. There was a presence from several, several large anti-gun protesters. I think the count was uh, four. Four, possibly. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, but when they started harassing some of the people carrying uh, uh, rifles, well, they and were handguns. harassing the people carrying the guns because they were so terrified of the guns. Yeah, they were scared. So when you're afraid of something, what you do is walk up to that person. Is you attack them? Yeah. And actually knocked a phone out of someone's hand, and the Michigan State Police escorted the uh, anti-gun people right off the premises and away. And it's not a surprise. I've said it over and over again. It's not a secret where the violence comes from, where the the hatred comes from, where all of the bad things that we're talking about comes from is the left. The left. Did I say the left? The left. I meant the left. The left, and that is the anti-gun, right, the anti-freedom, the... Go ahead and kill people with drone strikes. People on the left, you know, you have Lindsey Graham and John but, McCain, those but, sorts of people. But, but think of the children, <laughs> please. Think of the children. <laughs> there were. It turns out there were children at the rally. <coughs> I'm done. I'm done. There were I'm children at the rally. I know what I saw. A nice, upstanding young member of society, a nice boy, about 10, 12 years old. Carrying an AR-15 over his shoulder, I saw yeah. a cute young lady with a a pink uh, BB gun, air rifle. We had, you know, kids. It was out great there. seeing the kids up on the. There were a few kids up on the steps waving American flags while this was standing cool. in front of a thousand people with guns. I know, and they were right? terrified. They were terrified waving a flag, and it yeah. wasn't a white flag. It wasn't it a was white. It was the flag. American flag. It was funny how that works. Uh, I saw a yellow. Uh, yeah, I saw a lot of yellow flags. Don't tread on me. Yeah, yeah, with that snake on there. Ooh, snakes are scary. Yeah, I hate snakes. Uh, but it was, and a, you know what? I never do because I hate snakes. What? I never confront a snake to tell it I'm afraid of it, or knock because the I'm phone not out stupid. of its little no, hell no, non arms, <laughs> hell no. Ooh. I don't. How does a snake? Oh, there would never be mind. nothing worse than a, a snake with a cell phone. Or because with a, what creeps me out is that they can move so quickly and oh. they have no legs. Yeah. So if they're texting, oh, oh man, get out of here. Oh man. Now, um, the, the rally was good. We're gonna we're gonna put that aside. It was fantastic. We had a lot of uh, uh, pro gun people there. It was fun. We had uh, the Ater- Michigan Attorney General came there and spoke, and, and we had uh, state senators and re- representatives. It was wonderful. Uh, but moving on, I have a political quote for you. Okay. I don't know if you'll get this one, but I'll try it. And what? No, nothing. I'm ready for it. I'm. Are you sure? Put my thinking cap on, and also Google. Okay, get ready for googling. <laughs> Google, Google. That's a funny word. All right, here it is. Truth is the glue. I hear clicking that holds governments together. Compromise is the oil that makes governments go. Now you're going to disagree with that, but that's. Uh, yeah, I already one disagree. Hang former. on. 
Oh, come Ooh, on. Is he from Michigan? Yes, he is. In his dog. In this, this, I actually, and this I actually knew. He had a pretty awesome yellow lab named Did he? Liberty. Oh, that's, that's yeah. right. I remember Liberty. Yeah, and that, that's cool. That part I did know. I didn't know this quote, and you're right. I disagree. I don't disagree with the quote being correct. I disagree with oh, yeah. the quote being a good thing, saying that compromise is the oil, is the oil that makes the government go. Uh -huh. Compromise uh -huh. is what makes the government take more and more rights away from citizens. Compromise is how we get things like the Patriot Act. Compromise is how we get things like high-capacity magazine bans. Compromise is how we get things like soda bans. Doma? That's what compromise is. Compromise is never what really is good for the country. It's what does the side that's louder and more violent, who is the left, what do they want and what does the right which, need to do which one to wears, compromise? Which one wears down first and compromises yeah and it's and it's always the republicans always they always give in and say well it's just better to do it that way you shouldn't okay. say always um always all never say always and never say never <laughs> okay all right truth is the glue that holds government together compromises the oil that makes governments go gerald ford gerald, gerald rudolph gerald rudolph the red-nosed reindeer ford, ford said that yeah yes Hey, did you hear about the national? Did life? you know that he he was uh, <laughs> he was the only president? Are we going to play this game? What? The only president to never be elected by the electorate as president or vice president. Right, and he was both. I know. So that's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. What a great place in it's history. It's cool. I mean, the way he got there with the it's whole his, Nixon thing. It's, it's, it's historical. It's trivia. historical. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. presidential trivia. Luckily, Nixon wasn't a crook, and so. he pardoned Nixon. And he did. For and the that, good of the country, because little... <laughs> he compromised. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He had to make the government go. It's a good thing he's oily. <laughs> what some would say, slick. Yeah. All right. Uh, did you hear about the National Rifle Association? Joined into a uh, complaint with a bunch of gun groups in New York, you know, with that odious uh, whatever uh, secure ammunition and firearms act crap. They uh, filed in a <laughs> yeah, complaint yeah. Uh, with basically a lawsuit in the United States District Court in New York. Uh, the NRA is committed to defending the Second Amendment of law-abiding New Yorkers. The obvious disrespect for New Yorkers and their Second Amendment rights will not be tolerated. The New York Secure Ammunition Firearm Act threatens severe penalties for previously lawful activities. That I agree with, yep. and that is what... Ian Rand always said that, you know, if you want to control people, you make once legal activities Ayn illegal Rand, yeah. and make uh, everybody, uh, don't ever correct me, made uh, everybody uh, well, criminals. Ian, Ian, Ian is generally a Ian, man's Ian, name, and Ayn yeah, Rand was not a man. And, and, well, have you looked at pictures? <laughs> I'm <laughs> not so sure. I'm That's not terrible. so sure. That's terrible. But uh, not a handsome woman or the, a ha very <laughs> handsome man, though. Yeah. Very handsome man. Uh, so you're telling me that the yes. NRA is against these high-capacity magazine bans in New York? Where, so they say. And didn't Cuomo just backpedal on this, which is pretty hilarious to me yeah. because the ban. I love it. The ban originally. Apparently no one makes yeah. uh, seven-round magazines. Well, I have several. So do I. I don't <laughs> want to say that. but I don't uh, have any. Actually, well, but I used well, to. What we're gonna do though is we're gonna let you have ten round magazines, but you can only put seven seven bullets, as they yep. say. Bullets. You can only put seven bullets in it. What well, can I put primer and powder and casings to? <laughs> or just do that just the bullet. the bullet. No, just, just the bullet. Just the bullet. Don't give them ideas because they'll say <laughs> that <laughs> you true. can have two hundred bullets. Have Eight million bullets in your gun. No primers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Damn. Uh Anyway, so the NRA will defend the right of law-abiding New Yorkers, blah, 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 blah. You know, we knew this was going to be challenged. And, uh, and of so course, and, and I'm glad somebody is challenging it. The NRA isn't my favorite which, gun which group I, I want to bring country. up a past president of the NRA with a, a great statement that is that is uh, rung out through America over and over and over again. And actually, the uh, uh, unfortunately, Jim Carrey made a parody against this poor man. Of course he did. So let's play this, and we're, it's going to be time for a break. We'll go so we'll into take a break. a break right after that. We will remember. Be right back. You're listening to Ad Odds two four eight four five five Odds. So as uh, we set out this year to defeat the divisive forces that would take freedom away, I want to say those fighting words for everyone within the sound of my voice to hear 
and to heed, and especially for you, Diane Feinstein, from my cold, dead hands. It's beautiful. Love it. We'll be right back after this. The The Voice Voice of American American Conservatism. Conservatism. WRS Digital. Red State Talk Radio. Fact. U.S. credit card debt is eight times larger than it was 30 years ago. No wonder you and I are feeling the credit card crunch. You're not alone. Increasing prices and the costs of credit are stretching budgets and preventing people just like us from getting ahead or just catching up with our debts. At American Financial Debt Relief, we can help. We have tested ways to help you get out of debt. Find out how now. The call is free to learn more. If you qualify, we can reduce your interest, show you how to stop your debt from getting larger, and help you get out of debt faster than you can by making minimum payments. So if you're falling behind on your credit cards or medical bills, give us a call right now, where a free five-minute call can change your life. 800-978-4815. 800-978-4815. 800-978-4815. 800-978-4815. Reduce your credit card debt. Call now. 800-978-4815. 800-978-4815. Real Radio for Real Americans. Red State Talk Radio. Obama wants your money, and he's determined to get it. He wants your money to buy off unions, his Wall Street cronies, and to expand the Obama welfare nation. Well, Swiss America is determined to stop him from stealing your money. They want to send you an award-winning film, I Want Your Money, on DVD that exposes his plan. It'll help keep the government's hands off your money using gold, silver, and other hard asset strategies to protect your hard-earned money. Call today and request the DVD, I Want Your Money, normally $19.95, yours absolutely free. Let Swiss America show you how to use gold, silver, and other hard assets to protect your hard-earned money. Call now, 800-932-5146, 800-932-5146. Call Swiss America right now. Learn all about investing in gold, 800-932-5146, 800-932-5146. Call now. back you're listening to at odds with nate and brian hey did you hear about uh, mark kelly remember we talked about him last week he went and he bought this ar-15 that he was going to donate to the tucson police department and he just did it because you know he wanted to show how easy it was to buy these scary assault rifles yeah right he wanted to exploit the background check system and get get a, a scary assault rifle that's smaller than most hunting rifles in caliber and show oh, I know it. show how uh, how easy it was to get one, and how many people he could murder with one. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. No, he didn't. Say, he didn't say that. Uh, he just had one person he wanted to shoot, but uh, he didn't uh, go into details. Right. Well, you know, apparently there's this twenty, I don't know, day waiting period or whatever because it was a used gun and all that. It wasn't new through the FFL. So like a police also, hold on it. Yeah. Yeah, like a police hold. You know, I got to make sure it's uh, legal and everything. Well, apparently, uh, <laughs> what? No, let's just assume that it's not a legal gun. Right. So we hold it. It's like when I get, when I stop because I witness an accident, and they have to make sure I'm not a felon. It's the same thing. Are we going to go back to? I'm just the, the I'm local still bitter, police department still in Ireland that pulled you over and. It was back in Ireland. No, it wasn't. It was here in the United States, and it pissed us all off. But anyways, um, well, apparently the owner of that uh, that. Uh, gun shop said uh, well while i support and respect mark kelly's second amendment rights to purchase possess and use firearms in a safe and responsible manner uh, his recent statements to the media made it clear that his intent in purchasing the rifle from us was uh, for reasons other than for his personal use and in light of this i've determined that it is in my company's best interest to terminate his transaction prior to his returning to my store to complete all of the forms, all of the background checks, and all the stuff that makes it so easy to get this rifle, guess it's not so easy. Yeah, and that's hilarious to me. 
I think it's I think it's hilarious. Obviously, this company can refuse service to anybody they want. Well, they're supposed to be able to do that. That's what the FFL. If you don't feel right about selling the gun, you have the right. And to he turn came out and said that it was not for his personal use. Right. He admitted it. But what's even cooler, if that's a word, you're cooler than cool. More cooler. More most cool. He's going to refund you know all the money to Mr. Kelly. That's great. But he's going to take the rifle and he's going to donate it to the Arizona Tactical Officers Association where they'll raffle it off as a fundraiser and he's going to donate the price $1295 to the Eddie Eagle Safe Gun Program. That's good. I mean that's Absolutely. Good. Do you do you know who's part of this uh Diamond tactical Back, association Diamondback thing? Police Supply. What? Uh, who who who's going to take part in this uh raffle? Is is just an ordinary citizen going to get the firearm because I hope so. Or will it be a police officer that wins the raffle and gets the gun? Which is fine, too. I don't care. I, I just it think... It doesn't say here what, what I have, but it says it's raffled off to generate funds that will benefit the SWAT and special response officers. Yeah, and that's great. So I'm assuming it's available to anybody that wants to buy a ticket. I think it would be yeah, the so, best if so, just some you, random guy... No, or, even better yet, that Mr. Kelly buys a raffle ticket and he wins the <laughs> rifle. <laughs> That would be fine, too. And then he can donate it back to the Tucson Police Department. He is Department. just some guy as far as owning a firearm He is goes. some guy. Mm. Anyways, I think that's great. Uh, the company turned it down to make a political statement, and uh, uh, people are going to benefit from that. And the gun is not going to be destroyed or used by uh, necessarily a police department, but it could be used by an individual. Yeah, so. it's, it's great news. <laughs> Did you hear real quick, real, real quick, because we don't have a lot of time, uh, because I think... Uh, Miss uh, Bodman is going to be calling at the top of the hour. But uh, a northern Kentucky teen has been banned from saying the word bingo for six months by a district judge. Apparently this youngster bingo. went... Bingo. Bingo. And boom goes the dynamite. And apparently he went into a, uh, a local bingo hall and shouted bingo! And everybody had a lot of fun and it was, f you know, everybody laughed and joked about it and stuff. Except some jerk. Uh, oh, yeah, he was... Uh, he was from the Haley Park Hills Police Department. He was working as an off-duty security officer, didn't find it funny, and hmm. arrested him for disorderly conduct. And it stuck, apparently? Yeah, th what that's kind the, of bullshit that's part, is that? That's the part that I that's, don't understand. That's ridiculous. Obviously, we well, I say obviously. You and I know, most of our listeners know, but I'll say it anyway. You can be arrested for anything. Absolutely. And the police are really indemnified in the fact that they're not sure. generally going to get in they're any trouble. They're not going to be held responsible no. unless they do something that's outside the law. Uh, sure, but if they arrest you and can sort of in make good, a case yeah, that they good, have good a reason faith, to do it, they arrested you, such yeah. as you yelling bingo, which by all means is probably the best I'm probable cause for an arrest. I'm surprised he wasn't gunned down. He should have been well, shot. Well, was this in L.A.? No, it was in Kentucky. Okay, well, that's so why. God. If it were in L.A., the LAPD they would, have shot him. would have shot him. Because they said he was driving a truck that looked like... A different color, but it was also a pickup truck. And it was it two like, old it ladies like instead of, you know, a great big six-foot-eight guy. But anyway, right. that's another issue. Uh, yeah, so this guy gets convicted of it. Uh, of disorderly conduct, which is crappy. I mean, disorderly conduct is the catch-all phrase. You know, we'll get you whatever. But we must, didn't like what you were doing, so that's what we called he it. Must not have had a very good, uh, a good attorney. Anyways, he got six months. Uh, he can't say bingo, and he got two hundred fifty dollars fine. Well, so, uh, don't gloss over that because I think that's a big issue. Not only should he have not been arrested, not only should he have not been charged, not only should there this have not gone through and him been convicted and sentenced his first amendment right was taken away to say the word bingo right. i mean really and i'm sure it and was this, no harm at it all. was this crab haha -ha, funny we're going to give you this little tiny little sentence thing and yeah. it's going to be lighthearted, and you'll learn your lesson and that's what right. we'll do well that's not really what i'm looking for from a judge i'm looking for a judge to uphold the law and the constitution and not only that the kid's got a misdemeanor charge and I brought up the point when I was talking to you, what about lost income? What if his job is a professional bingo player? <laughs> he's not allowed to work now. He can't say bingo. He can't say bingo. He cannot possibly win at bingo without I, saying bingo. I suppose he could hire somebody, but that would be expenses. He could hire a bingo sayer. Look, not if you're playing by National Bingo Association rules. Or he could have computer generated and went, <laughs> bingo. bingo. That's true. Never mind. I, re I was wrong. 
I was right. wrong. As you often are. Often. Listen, we got a couple of minutes yet. We want to get a clip in. What real if he quick. was trying to sing the famous children's song uh, to a classroom full B-I-N-G. of children? B I N G. He could go, he could sing most of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And was his name all? He could yeah. sing the end. Yeah, then, he, you're right. But he couldn't all sing. All right. That. All right. All right. Doctor Benjamin Carson, the uh, the physician who uh, lambasted uh, Barack Obama for his oh great at the National Prentice. Prayer Breakfast. Yeah, great all kinds speech. of great stuff. Apparently not such a such a big gun fan. Although he's for the, I love it. He's for the Second Amendment, but and I always like to say, why don't you stick it in the butt? Where I don't. I, I don't know if he did say that. We'll listen to what he said. Well, he does. Okay, we got a soundbite real quick. All right, uh, Second Beck. Amendment. Uh, guns. There's a reason for the Second Amendment. People do have the right to have weapons. Uh, with this argument that's going on, the way we solve it is we ask, what is each side afraid of? And then we address it that way. Do I have a right to own a semi-automatic weapon? Uh, it depends on, on, on where you live, Aye. I think. I think if you live in the midst of uh, a lot of people, um, and I'm afraid that that, that semi-automatic weapon is going to fall anything? into the hands of a crazy person, I would and rather you happen. not have it. If Anywhere? you live out in the country somewhere by yourself, I have no problem. Um, is that a government, or the federal government, or the local government that can decide that? Uh, I think it'd probably be a local. At least he's a states' rights kind yeah, of guy. Yeah, right? a, a local government. I'm sorry, Mr. Carson. Lord. The things you said in your speech at the National Prayer Breakfast. You love. Ten feet in front of the president, talking about how terrible gutsy, gutsy. the president was. Extremely gutsy. I have so much respect for what you did there. I have so much respect for you continuing to speak out about this i mean you've you've became pretty big in in the media at least the conservative media the the media that doesn't lie to people what you did is great and everything else i've heard you say for the most part has been good but you are wrong about this maybe Absolutely he just needs some education wrong. because would you and if that's he changes, what i'm doing right now is yeah, i'm educating him if you ch if he changed his stance would you uh support him perhaps as president I don't know enough about him for that. Okay, but knowing what I know about him, so if he far, was consistent with other issues, that he seemed and he to be changed young. his stance on the Second Amendment yeah. and became pro-gun and pro-constitution, yeah. like he is with other things, yeah. yeah. Okay, why not? Good. I mean, I don't it, know. And it doesn't have to be run. him; it would be anybody else. Run. Well, you know, but he he's leaving it in God's hands. He will not say no. And and oh, has he been asked? Several times. Oh, really? It's been brought up he, several times. He, he won't, doesn't make more money he, from he practicing medicine. He doesn't plan. Well, it's not the money, right? I mean, it shouldn't be the right, money. Right, it's the service. And that's the problem You're is right. it becomes You're the right. money. But it's, it's not the money. He says it hasn't. it's not in his plan right now. He's not planning on it. He would do it if he thought he should. But And my point was, Mr. Carson, that whether you live in the country or in a city, your rights should not change. Right. A right is a right. Right. It doesn't matter where you are. It's yeah. a right. Yeah. And I am just as likely to murder people in the country with my semi-automatic oh, rifle are. You as are. I am in a city. Absolutely. I have the same are. chance that I will murder somebody. I have 911 punched right into I know right you do. I phone. see it. I see it when those giant buttons on your phone that you have there. I so have you can hit old, them with your old, man, <sighs> old man phone. But really, this it, this didn't surprise me too much. I mean, it... it it was shocking at first, but it's. It, I had reservations about him because right. he came out. He was so good, but he was always. I'm there not partisan, and I'm kind of, which is fine. But well, remember, he was caught a little off guard, but that's good because that tells you what is real, real. Sure. Yeah. Is. Exactly. And that I think that's why Glenn Beck does those things sure. on his that's a good uh, thing. his TV show. Is it's like the lightning round or whatever. So, do we want to uh, do a, a soundbite from Senator Rangel or Congressman Rangel or not? Yeah, let's have, do let's, that. Let's listen let's to Wrangle. Uh, okay. Listen to his estimates of children because his numbers are very close to accurate. And uh, we'll very head close to accurate. We'll head to a break and hopefully come back with with Karna Bodman. Yes. I'm ashamed to admit it, but it's politics and it's money. Uh, the National Rifle Association uh, has taken this position. There's no reason, there's no foundation, there's no hunter that needs automatic military weapons to enjoy the culture of, of going hunting. Uh, but, you know, it's really it's basically the absence of the voices of good people. I cannot believe that politicians are afraid of the NRA. If they thought for one minute that the churches and the synagogue and the priests and the ministers were saying, hey, do the right thing and we have your back. 
We're talking about millions of kids dying, being shot down by assault weapons. Millions. We're talking about handguns where it's easier in the inner cities to get these guns than to get computers. This is not just a, a political issue. It's a moral issue. And so when we condemn the NRA, we should not ignore the fact that a lot of people that have taken moral positions have been silent on this big one. We'll be right back. Red State Talk Radio. The idea of government taking over health care is enough to make you sick. The conservative voice. I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the Total Transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-800-257-2873. 1-800-257-2873. That's 1-800-257-2873. Great shot, Bob. I think you're on. I just followed your lead. Hey, by the way, did you break ground on your new building? No way. I'm holding off until I see what the future holds. <laughs> so you're seeing a fortune teller? You know what I mean. Things look a little uncertain. The only thing certain in business is if you're not growing, you're losing. And we just opened our fifth facility last week. If you're following my lead, you'll call General Steel. Their pre-engineered steel buildings could save you as much as half the cost compared to conventional buildings. And they're up in nearly half the time. And back with a 50-year structural warranty. Yeah, but steel buildings... Hey, you've seen my building. Does it look like steel? No, it looks great. Ask about rebates that could save you up to $20,000. Look, you can stop paying rent and own a building that suits your business better and probably saves you money by operating more efficiently. In times like these, don't stop spending, just spend wisely. 800-398-8309-800-398-8309-800-398-8309-800-398-8309. Red State Talk Radio. Why spend more than you have to on your life insurance? Did you know that term life insurance rates have fallen over 60% in the last 15 years? At the Life Insurance Quote Line, we monitor the rates, features, and financial strength of hundreds of life insurance products. For example, a healthy 40-year-old can protect his family with a half million dollars of 10-year level term for less than $20 a month. Rates for women are even lower. And don't forget to ask us about the new term life policies that guarantee your money back even if you don't die. Since 1986, we've helped tens of thousands of people just like you save a fortune on their life insurance. Why not find out how much you can save? Write down this number and call today for your free quote. One five-minute call is all it takes. Call 800-610-3497. 800-610-3497. That's 800-610-3497. Rates, policy forms, and availability vary by state. And we're back, and we have our guest on the phone, Karna Bodman. Uh, fascinating career and life so far, and I hope she has uh, many more years. She began her career as a TV reporter and anchor on both coasts, ending up in Washington, D.C., and when Reagan was elected, she was named as uh, James Brady's deputy press secretary. She often met daily with President Reagan, and she's traveled on Air Force One and has represented the United States all over the world on the president's economic priorities. Uh, she did such a good job with that that she was uh, named senior director and spokesperson for the National Security Council. And she's had arms control talks with the USSR, including Secretary Gorbachev in Geneva, which we hope to talk about a little bit later. She has met with the leaders of Great Britain, France, and Italy. And by the time she left the White House, she was the highest ranking woman on the White House staff. 
She's now written several books, including her recent novel, Castle Bravo, which is available all over the place, including Amazon and on her website. And if you want to find uh, out more about uh, Karna Bodman and her uh, books, you can visit her website at www.karnabodman.com. And I will say that, Karna, you've had a fascinating life, and it's our pleasure to have you with us on At Odds. Well, I'm delighted to be with you both, Brian and Nate. Yeah, Karna, how are you doing today? <laughs> Nate's, the, <laughs> Nate's the ultra-conservative that wants to kill everybody, and I'm a little bit more moderate. Okay. I don't think I've ever said that I wanted to kill anybody, Brian. That's not except true. Except you. Yeah, except <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, I you mean, might be uh, the only uh, one. Uh, that scared me a little bit. Well, but, I do kill off people in some of my novels, but not too many. Yeah, that's Although great. I will say that when, my, when I wrote my first book several years ago, I uh, met an editor at a writer's conference, and she, you know, you pitched her, and the, the, you go to those conferences, and you meet editors and agents, and you pitch your story. It's kind of like speed dating, you know, you yeah. Yeah. here, you yeah. know, like me, and uh, <laughs> <clears throat> agreed to work together, and the only trouble is I kept getting these emails, uh, wanting revisions, you know, they want a lot of revisions, uh, and yeah. I, I remember getting an email saying, can you kill off a character by page 100? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of hard. But hey, you know, Tolstoy rewrote Anna Karenina 17 times, so yeah. I think I can so, do that. So, yeah, you're in good company there. You there know, you, you, can, you can always have somebody just, like, fall off a building or something or get hit by a well, bus. Well, you know, but, uh, you but, know, usually, actually, what I like, I, I don't do a lot of, I, I don't do a lot of, a lot of violence and, and all that sort of thing. Um, I, I, I kind of like the political intrigue, sure. you know, the plots and trying yeah. to foil the plots of the bad guys and all that sort of thing. Absolutely. I get into that in all of my stories, and it's great fun. And I weave in scenes in the, <clears throat> the White House where we used to have meetings in the Situation Room every morning at 7.30 and meetings in the Oval Office, the Roosevelt Room, and so forth, and places around town. So anybody who's ever, ever been to Washington would recognize all the settings kind of fun that is cool and i and i love washington it's a it's a great uh, a great place i don't necessarily agree with everything that goes on there but that's another story oh, neither, neither <laughs> do I. Are you kidding? This, oh my lord this is this is your fourth but book I, well okay oh, go, mm -hmm. go ahead go, well i was just gonna say this is your fourth book and your second with uh, the main character samantha reed who is director of homeland security now your other books had uh, uh, the, the white house office of homeland security not the big agency with oh, okay. you know hundreds of thousands of people no there's there's a white house office that oh. kind of uh, that just sort of takes care of the the white house and all that yeah stuff. they kind of coordinate things you know that's good well mm -hmm. um you tend <laughs> to have uh, intelligent bright women who work for or with the white house i'm sure it's based a little bit on your experience uh, Tell us well, a I make bit about... my heroines a heck of a lot smarter than I am. I wasn't that smart. I wasn't that techie <laughs> well, or anything. <laughs> you, yeah, w w as a writer, you have the ability to research and to spend time with your whippy retorts and all that stuff. Oh, and yeah. you're working oh, on yeah. the fly, not so easy. But your newest novel is Castle Bravo. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, sure. Uh, first of all, the name, it, people think it's Castle Bravo. What, you know, what does that stand for? Yeah. What, what does that mean? Well, that actually was the name, the title of a top-secret government project, which figures into the story and was declassified um, a while ago, so I stole the name. And what was it for? And that's it. Well, <clears throat> I'll tell you, it was, um, it was a test, a nuclear test that we performed many years ago, one of the atmospheric tests, and we were still doing that back uh, way back in the 50s and 60s after sure. World War II, showing the world that we have a lot of these weapons, right. and of course the Soviets were doing the same thing. The only thing is, we uh, <clears throat> performed those tests out there in the Marshall Islands, and we talked Bikini out to all those places. Mm -hmm. We at least moved the natives off the islands, mm -hmm. I mean, before we blew them up. Now, the Soviets weren't so kind. They yeah. did atmospheric tests over places like Kazakhstan, and they even move people closer so they could check the radiation limits. Yeah, you know? they wanted real field data. This was not such a good thing. Yeah. So I, um, <clears throat> I'll, t I'll tell you, though, I got the inspiration for this story from a conversation that I had. It was fascinating um, with the, uh, a while ago, with the head of our entire missile defense system worldwide, someone I, I got to know because I wrote my first book about missile defense. I think it's a really cool concept and I was there when Reagan put that all together. Anyway, I'm talking to this major general, and he we had this conversation, and he said, now, Carnum, let me tell you why we really need an expanded missile defense system. Got to keep testing, got to keep working on it. Let me paint a scenario for you, he said. Let's just imagine it's a few years down the road, and some 
militant group, our country doesn't like us, something like that, a lot of those, uh, somehow that. gets hold of a small nuclear device. Now, they're all trying, right? Sure. I mean, you know, hey, uh, Pakistan's got 100 of them, yep. and North Korea, well, 1,000. Anyway, they, uh, they get a small device, and they also get hold of some sort of a delivery vehicle, meaning you could strap it onto it and shoot it off. It could be as simple as a Scud missile. Now, yeah. you know, somebody tried to sell a Scud missile on eBay a while back. Mm, caught that guy. Uh, in any event, let's say they've Darn, got these components. <laughs> and they're, they're off uh, one of our coasts in, in some disguised fishing boat or something. You, you'd never find them. And let's say what they're, General went on, he said, let's say what they're going to do is they're not going to aim it at San Francisco or New York, which would be unbelievably devastating. No, 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 no. What they're going to do is they're going to aim it straight up in the atmosphere, and they're going to detonate that weapon way, way up, uh, you know, 50 miles, 100 miles up uh, in the atmosphere. Now, what happens is it doesn't kill you on the ground. Sorry, Nate, doesn't kill anybody on the ground. <laughs> now, what it does, imagine, visualize shock waves emanating from that, that blast. Those shock waves are called an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP. Now, what that does is it fries all of the electronics on the ground. We would have no electricity grid, internet, cell phones, communication, transportation, sanitation, refrigeration, Aviation. He looked at me and said, Karna, it would set us back to the year 1910, and don't think our enemies aren't looking at it. We'd have, we still have cable TV, though, right? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have your show. Come oh, on. Darn and, it. And, and what's amazing is, I mean, people are looking at this stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and we know that, that, that this works. I mean, our scientists have known about EMP effects ever since they did those atmospheric testing way yeah. so long ago, which right. is where I got the title. And the thing is, we have developed, with our defense contractors, Pentagon and so forth, we have developed a, a number of what we call e-weapons, not using nuclear materials, but using other sort of microwave kinds of things, think of it that way, that, uh, <clears throat> that knock out electronics on a very small scale. In fact, we used one at the beginning of the Iraq War because we knocked out Saddam's yes, military communications. I remember that, yeah. And, and yeah. Did, didn't they use one to uh, take down the alien... Spacecraft that came in and, and crashed near Roswell. <laughs> oh, come on now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, so not sure about that one. Don't, don't listen but, you to know. <laughs> Now you know why. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I mean, this is a very scary scenario. And yeah. I don't know whether you guys uh, ever watch um, NBC show Revolution. Uh, that just came back on. It, it was on last fall, and they just brought it back uh, the other night. I think it was last time. Uh, but the whole concept, uh, premise for that show, it's right out of my book. They had to send me royalties. They uh, should. Is what, what do we do if we don't have electronics, if somehow they're gone for some reason? Right. They don't explain how or why. They don't say EMP. But uh, you, you got you kind know, of people marauding the countryside, yeah. you know, gangs, and it's living by candlelight. And, and we don't know that. how to live like that. Of course not. Yeah. I mean, we really don't. It would be chaos. So I, I wanted to write a book about it, and I've got this story that I put together um, <clears throat> uh, where Samantha Reed, my heroine at the White House, mm -hmm. uh, gets some uh, intelligence reports that other countries are looking at this sort of thing and tries to get the higher-ups uh, interested. Now, we did have – it's all based on true stuff. We did have an EMP commission uh, some years ago, a few years ago, yeah. testified before the House Armed Services Committee. I've read the whole thing made all kinds of recommendations to harden the grid, to this and that, you know, harden other things, but, you know, hey, it costs money and push down the it's road. Not a, not a high worry priority. About something yeah, else, yeah. You know, who cares? So they didn't do anything. I mean, a couple of military things are hardened, sure, but hey, what about the rest of us? Yeah. You know? I mean, well, it's really tough. So I wanted to write a book. And the love of her life and the story, Trip Adams gets sent overseas on a, on a trip to kind of a remote area. He's in the oil and gas business. And, oh, when was the last time you read a novel or went to the movies and the hero works for an oil and gas company? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> so he's over there in, in this remote area, and, and one of these things goes off by mistake. Well, my God, does he get out of there okay? Does everybody? Don't be too sure. And then they, there's a way that uh, people who did it figure out they've got a new weapon and they just may be targeting the United States. So it's a thriller, and yeah. uh, you got to figure out who's doing what to whom and getting God at it. Well. <clears throat> 
I, so that's I, the story of Castle Bravo. It, it's, it's available, it's, it's, you know, on Amazon or anywhere. And they they can find that out on your website as well. Oh, absolutely. It, uh, it, my name is kind of weird, Karna, K-A-R-N-A. Yeah. Then Bodman, like your bot, B-O-D-M-A-N. Yeah. So I'd love it if anybody, any of your listeners want to um, check the website. Uh, there is a place there that says contact. You know, they can contact me, send me an email. And I'd be delighted to send them an autographed book plate, you know, there have you an go. autographed book for a gift for somebody or something like that. There you go. And, Love to hear from And I think, uh, you know, I think it's a topic that, uh, you know, maybe we should uh, be a little bit more prepared on. Now, I may- well, yeah, the whole idea, is, it, missile defense is really important, not just because of an EMP attack, but because of a regular attack of any Certainly. kind. Certainly. I mean, l- look what Israel did with their, with their Iron Dome system, which is much more basic. I mean, they were able to knock down almost 90% of those attacks coming across their border, you know, those rockets coming over. They knock them down. I mean, that you're talking missile defense on a very basic level. Right. And finally, 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 the Obama administration is going to go ahead with deploying some more interceptors uh, on the West Coast. We have some at Vandenberg Air Force Base. We're going to beef those up along with Fort Greeley, Alaska, and develop some for the East Coast. Now, George W. Bush had the whole plans. We were supposed to do this and also deploy over in Europe, with Poland, the Czech Republic, signed, sealed, and delivered, and Obama dumped that whole treaty with with, with Poland and the Czech Republic, and he, and he canceled everything Bush was going to do. Now he says, oh, well, oops, maybe we should put a few up there, because look what North Korea has. I mean, if we had followed up with what Bush had planned, they'd already be there. Now it's not going to be until 2017. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's and, and we still have stiffed our European allies because the Russians objected. And what did we get in return? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nada. So I'll tell you, I, I, I was so impressed when I saw uh, President Reagan's determination on this issue of, of creating a missile defense system. Back then, you know, great idea and everybody thought he was nuts i said oh what are you superman a bullet hitting a bullet you know the guy's crazy but uh hey i wish he were alive today we've had almost 40 tests successful tests against ballistic missile targets it's incredible yeah and i wonder it what, is a bullet hitting a bullet yeah i wonder what still might be going on uh, that we're not necessarily aware of i i hope there's some research going on well, oh, oh, sure. Well, I mean, we're doing a lot of research, but, you know, Obama also canceled the next test of the airborne laser. We had this really cool system uh, because we had kind of a triad. You've got the ground-based um, systems, interceptors, that, that you, know, you can shoot those off. Then you've got the Aegis system that is on ships, and then we had this thing called the airborne laser. So you get the the plane up there that can try to get a, a, a missile of some sort. You know, it's already flying around. But they canceled it. I mean, come on. Yeah. The first one worked. They canceled the rest of them. Yeah. Well, you know, with with the sequester and everything, it's been. It oh, seemed... the sequester. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know that the missile defense budget is minuscule in terms of the Pentagon budget? Something like point oh one four percent, or something like that. But surely yeah. it can't be as Funny. big as the Easter egg roll or the White House tour budget, or the right? So, I mean, we have to cut. We have to cut what's important rather than cut things that make sense, right? So. Well, yeah. I mean, look, uh, uh, Michelle's got to take the kids to, uh, you know, Atlantis, and, uh, <laughs> sure. and Gore's got to run around with his limousines that cost three hundred and twenty thousand dollars a day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe Biden. Yeah, he had a. a Five hundred and some thousand dollar night hotel room in yeah. in France. I think I don't know how he did that, but oh god, it's absurd. Imagine the women but, were. But I mean, oh, never mind. You know, we're, we're obviously <laughs> paying for the right things because we had the presidential limo in Israel with the wrong fuel put in it. Did right? you hear about that? Oh, can you believe it? Oh, I know the <laughs> diesel versus oh, regular. It's, I don't know. Well, yeah, it's yeah. yeah, it's. I I real quick though. I you know I want to kind of get off your because I hate to say it. You are a historic person. You worked. Oh, uh, come on. Not really. it, 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 well, I mean, you did. I mean, I mean, there are a ton of people that worked very hard on all these issues, and I was kind of a a, a watchman there, you know. Dealing, but still, uh, you saw them, you but saw stuff. You were there. You experienced stuff. I wanted you to give us, you know, what was one of your most memorable times in the White House? What did you enjoy? Oh and, my gosh! And maybe what was one of the worst things that happened that you 
didn't like. Oh, well, there are a lot of places where we screwed up. <laughs> well, just how I about mean, one? Oh, well, let me, let me give you one that wasn't really my fault, Okay, but I thought it was pretty funny. Perfect. Now now um, you're saying that, yeah. I mean, okay, so Queen Elizabeth is coming for a state dinner. All right. Okay, that's a pretty important deal. She doesn't just you know, come here the other day. She's going to come for, 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 for dinner. And, and a big meeting and everything. So everybody's studying the protocol, you know, the right way to do everything and all that. So they, they plan the state dinner, it's lovely, and uh, you have day, dinner in the state dining room. And then at the conclusion of that, people go uh, across, it's called the cross hall, over to the east room. And that's where you usually have uh, the dance floor and you have entertainment and the Marine Band is playing and so forth. So at exactly the right time, President Reagan leans over to the Queen <laughs> and asks if she would grace him with her presence on the dance floor. So they get up, she nods yes, of course, and they get up and they wend their way over the dance floor and just as they step on the floor, the Marine Band starts to play <laughs> the song, The Lady is a Tramp. <laughs> Oh, God, you can't make it up. Perfect That's pretty funny. I mean, that's nothing to Obama giving his toast through, I think it was the, the English national anthem, right? He, I think he was over oh, there with the queen. It, and, yeah, I forget exactly how, which one he screwed up on Finished giving his, one, but, his you know, toast. It happens. It, yeah. it happens. Yeah, sure. Now, sure. I mean, listen, on, on a serious note, it, we, just for one second, we were talking about missile defense. You might recall some months ago when Obama decided to dump the the plan we had with Poland to, to put – missile defense over there mm -hmm. he announced it on the very day that was the 70th anniversary of the soviet invasion of poland that, that's because he that has day. no idea of history i mean he's is, an idiot. I mean, is that it i don't know where his, his or did he do it intentionally i don't know working but you know well nate's, it is. nate's bugging me he wants to talk about taxes yeah you you I mentioned you oh, mentioned hey, great. tax great, policies great, great. and uh do you, got see, a couple minutes left. do you see any differences between uh, how Reagan approached taxes and, and the current administration? Oh, please. Oh, please. <laughs> Listen, we, you guys are probably too young to remember, but when we came into the office, we had pretty tough times. 12.5% inflation, 21.5% interest rates, double-digit unemployment. You know, pretty tough. Tough now, but tough. And uh, Reagan's prescriptions were exactly the opposite of what we got now. I mean, he yeah. got through a 25% cut in marginal tax rates across the board for everybody. Uh, cut in regulations, get government out of the lives of business, you know, and uh, that sort of thing. When he came in, there were 87,000 pages of regulations in the Federal Register. When he left, there were 40,000 pages. You know, not, yeah. not everything, but, I mean, he really made a heck of a, heck of a, a difference. And what, what, what was the result? Well, eventually, 3% growth, 4% growth, 7% growth in GDP, and the creation of 18 million new jobs. Yeah. And what do you look at today? Now, I, I saw an article recently, and I made a note of it because I thought it was amazing. We're, now we're coming up on uh, you know tax filing time. We're probably all working on that kind of stuff. And do you guys know the tax code now has nearly 4 million words? It's 10 times the size of the Bible. Individuals spend 6 billion hours filing with the IRS. It's ridiculous. And, oh, by the way, <laughs> did you notice that when you put the words the and IRS together, it spells theirs. <laughs> well, anyway. Of course it does. Um, <laughs> now, there's, I've got this idea. Can you help me? We have this, this idea kind of around. I have an idea. Members of Congress are always taking pledges for stuff, right? Right. Yeah, pledge for this, pledge for guns, pledge for, yeah. you know, whatever. Let's get them to take what we'll call an honor pledge. This isn't going to cost any money or anything. An honor pledge that they will, each member will fill out his own tax return. Never happen. <laughs> they pass the laws, shouldn't they have to follow well, them? Well, of course, but they're above the law. And once they go through the drill, once, I think we'll get tax simplification pretty darn fast. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, but I mean, look at who's a, who, who was first to be exempt from Obamacare. It was Obama, <laughs> right? And, yeah, you know, and, and, and the and people Congress. who passed the bill, so... Yeah. But I, I don't think that's a bad about idea. Tax simplification all the time. Reagan said, you know, I think the IRS wants two lines on a postcard. Line number one, list your income. Line number two, send it in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and just just as far as the age goes, there, I you know, I was born and Eisenhower was president. So just to give you an idea. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, listen, you remember some of this stuff. I, I mean, do, you know? I do. I remember where I was when Reagan was shot. So. 
Right. Uh, well, listen, I was scheduled to be in the car with Jim Brady that day. Oh, my goodness. I didn't go at the last minute. I talk about that a lot. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. That's pretty... Real quick, uh, I, we got, only got I don't want to get too far into this, but how was Jim Brady before that? And I don't know if you knew his wife at all, but were they sort of wonderful. anti-gun? And... Wonderful people. Wonderful okay. people. J- Jim, his nickname was the bear, like teddy bear. Oh, yeah. You know, because he was such fun. He had a great sense of humor. We all loved him. And I've got pictures on my wall of, of Jim and me and the president and whatnot, you know, before the shooting, because yeah. he was walking around, you know, he's really great. And and even even now, my understanding, he's, um, <clears throat> you know, mentally, he's great. He yeah. knows what's going on sure, and everything. Yeah. You know, it's just that he's... Physical stuff. Physically got, yeah. got problems. A wonderful, wonderful guy. Okay. All right. Well, we want to thank you very, very much. It was a fascinating uh, journey uh, back in time and uh, about uh, your book, uh, Castle... Bravo, a uh, top secret coded uh, <laughs> word that's now been declassified. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And you can find uh, her books uh, at bookstores all over the country as well as Amazon. And you can go to her website, www.carnabodeman.com. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nate. It's Thank been you. it's been Thanks, fascinating. Right? Yes, yeah, oh, it's loved fun. It. Thank, no, thank you, Carna. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having and, me on. And good luck with your book. And get writing another one. I know you are. I'm working on number five. All right. All right. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Bye-bye. You got it. Bye. Bye-bye. And we would, we would, we'll be back in a, in a couple minutes. But we want to say that next week we'll be talking with attorney Jack Duffy, an expert on the JFK assassination and author of a science fiction novel on an alternate history on the assassination of President Kennedy, titled The Man from 2063. So be sure to listen in next week. The Voice of American Conservatism. Conservatism. WRS Digital, Red State Talk Radio. Fact, U.S. credit card debt is eight times larger than it was 30 years ago. No wonder you and I are feeling the credit card crunch. You're not alone. Increasing prices and the costs of credit are stretching budgets and preventing people just like us from getting ahead or just catching up with our debts. At American Financial Debt Relief, we can help. We have tested ways to help you get out of debt. Find out how now. The call is free to learn more. If you qualify, we can reduce your interest, show you how to stop your debt from getting larger, and help you get out of debt faster than you can by making minimum payments. So if you're falling behind on your credit cards or medical bills, give us a call right now, where a free five-minute call can change your life. 800-978-4815. 800-978-4815. Reduce your credit card debt. Call now. 800-978-4815. 800-978-4815. Real radio for real Americans. Red State Talk Radio. Obama wants your money, and he's determined to get it. He wants your money to buy off unions, his Wall Street cronies, and to expand the Obama welfare nation. Well, Swiss America is determined to stop him from stealing your money. They want to send you an award-winning film, I Want Your Money, on DVD that exposes his plan. It'll help keep the government's hands off your money using gold, silver, and other hard asset strategies to protect your hard-earned money. Call today and request the DVD, I Want Your Money, normally $19.95, yours absolutely free. Let Swiss America show you how to use gold, silver, and other hard assets to protect your hard-earned money. Call now, 800-932-5146, 800-932-5146. Call Swiss America right now. Learn all about investing in gold, 800-932-5146, 800-932-5146. Call now. And we're back. I, I just want to say, wasn't she a delight? She was. It Karna was, was absolutely great. Time having Karna Bodman. Great. What a Karna great Bodman. Dot com. Pick up her book. Yeah. And we want to thank you all for listening to At Odds and check out our website. And remember, uh, you can see who's going to be coming up on our show at our website www. At Oddshow. Com. And we thank you very much for listening. Thanks. Until then, thanks bye for bye. listening to At Odds. <laughs>